Hello, math learners. This video is about Taylor polynomials and Taylor series. So to begin, we have this goal to approximate a function f of x for x values near some point a. So here's our point a, and we want to approximate the value of the function evaluated near a. So if we want to be um, very just rough about things, then we could say that f of x is going to be approximately f of a for x values near a. So this is just super simple. If we want to make it a little bit less simple, we could say that f of x is approximately f of a plus f prime evaluated a times x minus a. So this would be a linear approximation. And again, this would be for x values near a. And we could improve our approximation by adding another term. So if we add another term, we'd have f of x is approximately f of a plus f prime evaluated at a times x minus a. Then we would add on our next term. We would take two derivatives of f of x evaluated at a multiply by x minus a squared and divide by two factorial. And we could just keep going like this. So here we have um, three terms. We could add a fourth term by taking three derivatives of f evaluated at a, multiply by x minus a cubed and divide by three factorial. And we could just keep on going like that. So if we have infinitely many terms here, then that's called a Taylor series. And if we just have a few terms, or in other words, if we have a finite number of terms, then that's a Taylor polynomial. So for example, if we stop at our third derivative, then this would be a Taylor polynomial of degree three. Once we have infinitely many terms, then this is no longer an approximation. It would just be an equality. All right, so that is our brief intro to Taylor series. Let's look at a quick example. So let's look at f of x being sine of x, and we're going to create a Taylor series using a equal to 0. So what we need to do to apply this right here, we need to take some derivatives. So we take the first derivative of f of x. So in other words, we're looking for the der derivative of sine x. So we have cosine of x. Second derivative is negative sine of x. Third derivative is negative cosine of x. And let's do a fourth derivative as well. So we start to see the pattern. We'd have positive sine of x. Now we need to evaluate these at a equal to zero. So f of zero is equal to sine of zero, which is zero. f prime evaluated at zero is cosine of zero, which is one. f double prime of zero is sine of zero, so we get zero. f triple prime of zero is negative cosine of zero, so we get negative one. And then we have the fourth derivative of f evaluated at zero. So we have positive sine of zero or zero. Okay, so now we have our derivatives and we can plug them into our equation here. So f prime of x or, or uh, rather sine of x is equal to, so we have f of zero or zero plus f prime of zero, which is one times x minus a. Then we have this zero here 
times x minus a squared over 2 factorial. Then we have our next derivative there. So we've got negative 1 times x minus a cubed over 3 factorial plus next we'd have another 0 and then we would just keep going like that. So just to kind of clean things up a little bit, get rid of the zeros, sine of x is equal to x minus a plus a negative x minus a cubed over 3 factorial plus x minus a to the 5 over 5 factorial minus x minus a to the 7 over 7 factorial plus dot dot dot. And of course, we are creating this Taylor series around the point a equals zero. So we can clean this up a little bit farther. So sine of x is equal to x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial minus x to the 7 over 7 factorial plus dot, dot, dot. All right, so this is our Taylor series, or sometimes you see it called the Taylor expansion for f of x, which is sine x. And the nice thing about creating a Taylor expansion or a Taylor series for a function is it's really easy to take derivatives and integrals of polynomials. If we don't know how to take a derivative or integrate sine x, um, if we have its Taylor series expansion, then we can do that pretty easily. So for example, if we did not know how to take the integral of x sine of x, what we could do is take sine of x, which is up here, and we would multiply that by x. So x sine of x is equal to x times all this up here. So x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial minus x to the 7 over 7 factorial plus dot dot dot. So this is x squared minus x to the 4 over 3 factorial plus x to the 6 over 5 factorial minus x to the 8 over 7 factorial plus dot dot dot. And so then now we could integrate this just by integrating the right hand side. So we'd have x squared x to the 4 over 3 factorial plus x to the 6 over 5 factorial minus x to the 8 over 7 factorial plus dot 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 dx and just integrate this term by term. So then the integral of x sine dx would be equal to 1 third x cubed minus 1 fifth x to the 5 over 3 factorial plus 1 seventh x to the 7 over 5 factorial minus 1 ninth x to the 9 over 7 factorial plus and so on. All right, so that is the cool thing about Taylor series. It makes integration um, pretty easy. And so this is one way that we could use a Taylor series to integrate something if we didn't know how to integrate this. Of course, we could use um, integration by parts for this one, but say that you forget how to do it, then you could always use a Taylor series to figure it out on your own.